Hi, I'm Eric Anderson, and I'm part of the Habitat team here at Facebook AI Research. Habitat is a high-performance simulation framework for training robots and other embodied agents. In this tutorial, I'm going to focus on profiling and optimization. If you're already using Habitat, I encourage you to follow along, apply these steps to your own train program, and I expect you'll find a few ways to speed up your training. Let's get started. In this tutorial, we're going to install, run, profile, and optimize an example RL train program all in real time on this CoLab machine. So why focus on optimization? The goal here is higher frame rates. Speed and efficiency are core values of the Habitat framework. Higher frame rates let us scale our RL training to more steps, and it lets us iterate faster on our day-to-day -day experiments. So our end goal is optimization, but an important first step is profiling. Without a profiling framework in place, it's hard to know where our program is slow, and it will be hard to evaluate whether our optimizations are producing a real speedup. Let's install Habitat on this machine, including some code specific to this tutorial. This will take a few minutes. For our example program, I've chosen point goal navigation using PPO. If you'd like to learn more about this RL task, check out our other tutorial in this series on navigation and Habitat. For now, I'll just give a brief overview. Looking at the pseudocode on the main thread, the top level train function has a train loop. On each train step, we collect rollouts, which includes computing actions and stepping the environments. Then in update agent, there's another loop where we compute surrogate losses and optimize the agent policy. Our implementation delegates environment stepping to two worker threads. For each worker thread, the top level worker M function has an event loop. It runs M step, which invokes the Habitat simulator to render observations. It also computes rewards. All of this is sent back to the main thread. Let's review the process we'll use in this tutorial. We'll start by modifying our train program to run for a very small number of steps. This will help us iterate quickly. Next, we'll capture our first profile using a tool called PySpy. The PySpy profile will give us a broad overview of where time is spent in our program, and we'll also identify candidate functions for later optimization. PySpy has some limitations, so next we'll switch to an NVIDIA profiler that supports annotation. We'll mark up the areas of code identified earlier, then we'll capture another profile with higher timing precision. At this point, our profiling framework is in place, so we'll try some optimizations. To evaluate any speedup, we'll rerun the NVIDIA profiler and compare timings before and after. A typical RL train program can take hours or days, but we want to be able to iterate very quickly here. So we're going to modify our program to run for just 100 steps and then terminate. Here, I'm just testing our profiling config to make sure it runs without error. We're now ready to capture our first profile. PySpy is the sampling profiler for Python. We run it from the command line, passing our program as an argument. Our program completes and PySpy outputs a profile. When you run this Colab cell, your browser will download the profile to your local machine. Open the speedscope.app website and drag and drop the file. At the top left, select the left heavy view. PySpy captures all the threads from our main process and any child processes. Unfortunately, they're not named here, so you'll have to poke around to find the threads we care about. Here, we can see the main thread with our top level train function. The view here is something like a flame graph or call stack. So for example, train calls collect rollout step update agent, and a few other functions. The x-axis is time, so right away we can see that collect rollout step is more expensive than update agent. Earlier in the tutorial, we looked at pseudocode for our train program, so if you've forgotten some of these functions, you may want to rewind and review. I'm going to double click to take a closer look at collect rollout step. The largest block of time here is wait step. Recall that our implementation uses two environment worker threads. What we're seeing here is the main thread waiting for those worker threads to finish and return their results. This is a huge fraction of our program's total runtime, but this is expected because environment stepping is very compute heavy. As we go through the rest of the major functions in the PySpy profile, one key question to ask is, does the function's runtime match our expectation? Is this a major part of RL training, or is it an outlier, something we wouldn't expect to be expensive? Let's look at the next major function, act. 
This runs our agent policy network to compute the next actions. We see a 2D convolution, a recurrent unit, and sampling from a distribution. This all matches our expectation, so let's move on. This function, short for batch observations, is also fairly expensive. Without going into details, all of this is essentially moving data around in memory, and it feels pretty wasteful. Unfortunately, there's no easy fix, but I can tell you that within the Habitat team, we're working on this, and we hope to provide a solution in the future. For now, let's move on. Looking at update agent, first we have evaluate actions. This is our forward prop to compute surrogate loss. Then we have clip grad norm, which is gradient clipping that happens after back prop and before our optimizer step. And then we have backward, which is the back prop itself. It's surprising that clip grad norm is so expensive. However, we should remember that forward prop, back prop, and the optimizer step are mostly comprised of GPU operations that execute asynchronously. So the CPU time spent in these Python functions can be misleading. Even still, let's flag before step and clip grad norm as our first optimization candidate. Now that we have a pretty good sense of where our main thread is spending time, let's move on to the worker threads. This view is a little confusing. We're seeing three different threads from three different processes. This may be a bug in PySpy or my own code, but it's not really a problem for us. Let's take a look at one of the worker threads. We see worker env, which is the top of a function from our earlier pseudocode. We see receive, which is the worker thread waiting for a command. We also have send. Like the earlier batch observations, this is just moving data around and it's something the Habitat team is working to improve. Finally, we have step. There are several layers of abstraction, so we see a lot of functions here called step. Almost all this time represents waiting on the simulator to render observations. And while the Habitat renderer is very efficient, this part of the RL train loop is always going to be fairly expensive. But how about this call to update measures? This is our reward function, and for this tutorial, I've actually modified it from the baseline point nav implementation. I added this get walkability score function, and it's intentionally very compute heavy. So this outlier is entirely contrived, but I do think it's a good example of experimental code you might have in your own code base that could be causing a performance problem. Update metric and get walkability score will be our other candidate for optimization. So what have we learned from the PySpy profile? We identified the major contributors to our program's runtime, like collect rollout step and update agent. We also discovered two candidates for optimization, clip grad norm and get walkability score. Before we jump into optimizations, I want to introduce another profiler from NVIDIA called Insight Systems. Whereas PySpy is a sampling profiler and only captures function calls, Insight supports manual annotation and has some other advantages, including higher precision timing. When I say manual annotation, I mean we're going to mark the major parts of our Python code identified earlier. This will allow the Insight profiler to record the CPU time spent in these ranges. We'll use Habitat helper functions called range push and range pop. Let's look at some pseudocode to see what I mean. This is a range push for our top level change function. And here's the corresponding range pop. And here's a range corresponding to one iteration of our train loop. We mark all the major parts of our program identified earlier, about 15 ranges in total. After we're done annotating, we'll invoke the NSYS command line tool to capture an insight profile. Insight finishes and outputs an SQLite database file. We use a Habitat helper script to print a concise summary of timings. For example, train's inclusive time roughly represents our program's total runtime, but most of that time is also represented in train loop body. 
Chain's exclusive time is mostly program startup time that we didn't bother to annotate. The timings here match our expectations from the PySpy profile. So with this profiling framework in place, we're now ready to start optimizing. Let's first address get walkability score, which is called by update metric. Looking at the source code, there's a loop. We're generating a random point, and then we're querying the habitat simulator's nav mesh. This looks like some kind of sampling, and given how expensive the function is, it seems reasonable to reduce the number of samples. Let's capture another insight profile. Our program completes and insight outputs another SQLite profile. We call our helper script again with the relative flag. And sure enough, we see a big improvement in update metric. We also see an improvement in total runtime represented by train's inclusive time. We've sped up training, so this is great progress. Now let's address our other optimization candidate, ClipGrad Norm, which is called by before step. I did a quick web search, and it seems like a few other PyTorch users have found this function to be expensive as well. There's another gradient clipping method we can try here. Whereas ClipGrad Norm clips the length or norm of the entire gradient vector, ClipGrad Value does an element-wise clamp. It might be faster, so let's try switching to it just as an experiment. If it yields a good speedup, we can investigate whether this is a reasonable permanent change to our policy optimization. We capture another profile. A program completes and we compare our new run against the old one. Unfortunately, the results are inconclusive. We see a big improvement in before step, but we don't see a big improvement in total program runtime. In the next section, we'll see how asynchronous GPU work might be causing misleading timings here. Overall, I'm glad we encountered this somewhat surprising result. It's a good reminder that you should always evaluate total program speed up, not just speed up for a particular function. So far, we've focused on summary timings, looking at the total accumulated runtime of a function or annotated range. In this section, we'll use a multi-threaded trace or timeline view to better understand GPU usage and multi-threading performance. We'll investigate why our second optimization candidate failed to produce a program speedup. We'll also identify a new optimization candidate. To follow along here, you should install Insight Systems onto your desktop. First, we revise our Insight Capture script to include CUDA. Then, we capture another profile. Insight produces a profile with a QD rep extension. Let's download it to our desktop and open it in the Insight GUI tool. This is a trace of our program run. We set our main thread, our two worker threads, and CUDA execution on the GPU. Let's look at the main thread and zoom in on one iteration of the train loop. We call collect rollout step many times in a loop, then we call update agent. Update agent uses a loop to optimize our agent policy. Let's zoom in on one iteration. Here's before step. This calls clip grad norm, and it's the function we tried to speed up earlier. Let's zoom in one more time. I don't want to dive too deeply into GPU profiling for this tutorial, but I'll briefly explain what we're seeing here, and then I'll summarize a couple takeaways. These short CUDA API events are kernel launches on the CPU. When we click one, the tool highlights the corresponding execution on the GPU. In some cases, they execute much later. They're asynchronous with respect to the CPU. Some are expensive on the GPU, and some are so small we can hardly see them in this view. And how about this CUDA memcopy call? Why is it so expensive? We'd have to do some more digging to be sure, but I'm guessing the function is blocking and waiting for this GPU work to finish. Overall, it looks like the GPU is pretty busy here. It may be that our program is GPU bound for this portion of update agent rather than CPU bound. I want to make a couple points about this GPU bound scenario. First, in order to get a speed up, we need to speed up or reduce the GPU work. Speeding up CPU code probably won't help. Second, we can't rely too much on fine-grained CPU timing to guide our profiling in this situation. 
The fourth step looks expensive on the CPU, but most of that time is just waiting in this CUDA memcopy call. The actual GPU work related to gradient clipping is quite small. Next, we'll take a closer look at collect rollout step. Let's review the algorithm. First, the main thread runs the agent policy to compute actions. It issues step commands to both worker threads, then it waits. A worker thread steps its environment to produce observations. Then it calls update metric, our modified reward function. The worker sends its rewards and observations back to the main thread. Once both worker threads have finished, the main thread batches observations and inputs them to the agent policy to start the next rollout step. Even after our earlier optimization to update metric, it's still fairly expensive. Looking at this multi-threaded trace view, there's another way to optimize here. Can you spot it? First, notice that after send, the worker threads are idle, waiting for their next commands. Second, notice that observations are the only worker output needed to compute the next step's actions. The rewards aren't used until much later in update agent. So, update metric can probably be moved after send. This would increase parallelism and probably yield a speedup. This is another candidate optimization, and if you'd like to experiment with it in the collab, check out my instructions at the end of the tutorial. All right, let's wrap up here with a quick review. If you want to speed up your habitat training, you should start with profiling. Use PySpy and SpeedScope to find initial candidates for optimization. If you annotate your code as we did here, you can capture precise summary timings, and this will help you evaluate speedup. Finally, Insight's multi-threaded trace view can help you spot GPU-bound scenarios or opportunities for better parallelism. If you want to go further, my first suggestion is to experiment in the collab. You should also look at all the other features in Insight systems. And lastly, stay tuned to our GitHub and website because we hope to integrate more profiling tech soon. Thanks for listening, and be sure to check out the other videos in this Habitat tutorial series.